Hey, good morning to y'all. How y'all doing? Pretty good? I know I'm a couple of minutes late, but I've been loving on people. Amen? We need some loving, don't we? Well, it's a good, pretty good looking crowd for summer in July here, you know, I tell you. We're halfway through summer, guys. We're like week number nine, all the way from England. How are you, buddy? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. God bless you. But week number nine or something of the 17-week haul in the summer around here. So we're right in the middle of it, baby, and we're doing good. I was out in Colorado, and I got a big Denver fan right here. And uh, come on. So that's for you. That's for you, buddy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, I love Well, I saw it now when I went by and I wanted to either spit on it or throw it in the trash. But I saw it, I saw it won't be like $4 and I'm like, no, it wasn't on the side of the road, not in Colorado. They, I tell you what, that guy, they, they, they really like him out there. But I thought of you. God bless you, man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get on up. Let's get on up. Come on going to have a great day today. If it's your first time at fellowship, you're probably already thinking, that guy's a little odd. Well, just hang on. It's going to get better. But uh, looking forward to a great day today. You're loved and you matter. You might not know that, but I'm going to tell you, speaking from a little experience, I'm telling you, I know what it feels like to not feel like you're loved or you matter. I'm going to tell you something. I know I am, and I know I do. Amen? And uh, you're in a good place today. If you're hurting today, boy, did you ever pick a good place to be at this, this Sunday morning. My two kids mentioned Elise are up here usually every week, and they're away with their mom in Alaska. And uh, so they're having a good time, and I've encouraged them, man, you go out there, and y'all love on each other, love on mama, and all that's a good thing to do. Amen? And... Uh, but thank the Lord, we got a great team. We got Mr. Joel today taking the helm and going to lead us out in some great singing. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're in for a great day. Let's go. Come on. Uh-oh. Let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. That's where we live. Amen. Come on, son. Amen. Come on. Oh, 
a long time we remember that song that's an old hymn that's not that song I mean it is but they just took it and changed it a little bit it's called one day amen what a great song I always love that song I love the words I love the way it carried us through the life of Christ amen that he's coming again here's a great song beautiful it's a newer song last several years it's been out but it talks about the lion and the lamb and the songwriters did a, a marvelous job of showing us who he is. He's the lion, Judah, but he's also the lamb of God that was slain to take away the sins of the world. Amen. Sing it with us today, the lion and the lamb. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare His praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. His glory battles and every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Yeah. 
sing forget about it amen i can get into it but uh sometimes it's uh, good to just remember what those words are too amen what what great truth only god can do what he does i mean come on to be the lion of judah to fight our battles at the same time be the lamb that was slain for the sins of the earth our sins and to raise from the dead <sighs> a little confusing it sounds but he's god amen and he he goes to fight for us. He fought on the cross for us so that we could be saved. That's why there's no other way. You're not getting to heaven any other way. In a dream world, get the truth, and that is that Jesus Christ is the only begotten of the Father. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And I know it's, it sounds argumentative. It sounds narrow-minded. It is narrow-minded. And if I need to, I will argue with you about it means if you don't like me a little bit because I'm straightforward, I'd rather you not like me a little bit and go to heaven. How about that? Amen? Come on. And know the truth. Come on. Get it? And if you listen, if you watch the songs here and things like that, not every one of them, but most of them, we try to have some songs that also teach you some truth about the Lord. Amen? And so as you're singing, a lot of times you're singing the Bible, you're singing scriptures, you're singing things that's going to help edify you in your faith and grow you a little bit. Amen. So don't be surprised as you're singing and coming here, you're going to be growing in the Lord. Amen. That's the plan. Come on. Thank you for being here. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you that you're God and we're not. And just singing a song like that, well, it really puts, gives us perspective that we're not you. That's for sure. We can't do what you do. You're God and we're not. 
Thank you, Jesus, for being the Lion of Judah. Thank you, Jesus, for being the Lamb that was slain so that we could be saved. Thank you, Lord, that you love us, that no one can pluck you from our hand because you're the Lion of Judah. You fight our battles. Thank you, Lord, that you're the Lamb of God that was slain that you love us, that you shed your blood for us, that you'll never throw us out with the trash. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for doing it all so that we could truly be saved and have confidence that we know that when it's our time to go, we're going to go be with you and that you're here with us now and you walk with us and you love us. God, thank you for that. Bless us today. We don't want to have church without you, Lord. Please be in our midst. And walk among us, Lord, today. By your spirit, I pray. Lord, take songs today and take the message today. And, and as only you can do in individual hearts. And you can tailor the message for every person in this room. And it's different for every one of us. Because you know us individually. And you love us. And you know right where we are in our life. So God bless us, Lord, today, we pray. We fall at your feet. And Lord, we're glad to be in your house today. We're glad to start our week off at church. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Be seated, please. I hope you can tell I'm excited to be here. Amen, come on. Y'all got, are y'all awake or what? I hope so. How many of you had no coffee, no nothing, and you just about to die, and you just want to tell me about it? All right, well, come on. All right, go get some water or something. Amen. Come on. Come on. How many are like me and you just really don't like water? Is there anybody else in the room just don't? They tell you it's good for you. You need to drink a lot of it, but you just don't want to do it, do you? Because you're just hard-headed. Join the club. Amen. Come on. Let's go. Miss Rachel, how are you? I get on your nerves, don't I? Good, good, good. Come on. Good morning again, and we, we hope that you're still glad that you chose to come and worship with us today. Um, if this is your first time with us, uh, we want to make you feel so very welcome. And if you haven't felt loved and welcomed yet from walking in that door, from your hug from Miss Edna or whoever else might have been at that door, um, then shame on them out there for not giving you that hug and making you feel welcome. But we also want to give you a gift. And so if you would let us know that it's your first time at the table out in the lobby, they're going to give you a bag. And inside that bag, it's just a small gift, um, a token of our appreciation for you coming to worship with us and visiting us here at Fellowship. We also love to know how you found us here at Fellowship Church. So if you take the moment to fill out the guest registry in your worship guide, tear it off and drop it in the offering bag. We absolutely love to know how you found us here at Fellowship Church. So take the time to do that. And we're so happy that you're here today. We have our first Wednesday communion coming up this Wednesday. When? This Wednesday at 6 p.m. right here at our church. It's going to be an amazing time of praise and communion and just fellowship together. So come on out. It lasts about an hour. Um, you'll be blessed if you do. So we'll see you this Wednesday at 6 o'clock for communion. We also have this Saturday coming up at 8 a.m., our men's prayer breakfast. And this is a great time for our men to get together, to grow in strength, and to strengthen each other and build each other up. And this is a, usually a good time of a testimony. Um, it's all free. Breakfast is provided. And guys, you'll be blessed if you come on out. So ho hopefully the men will all see. I won't see you there, but maybe my husband will. We'll see you Saturday at 8 a.m. There is a back-to-school bash happening on Saturday, also at 9 a.m. at our Sky Academy, which is on River Road. And we need volunteers for this. Um, they need volunteers for this. Um, this is an opportunity for you to get out there, wear your shirt, and show this town and these kids how much you love them and appreciate them and are behind them for the school year. This back-to-school bash is great um, because it gets um, kids the supplies that they need and things that they need to start their school year off right. Not only are they getting supplies, I think they're offering haircuts and um, shoes, um, clothing. They'll also do physicals um, for the kids for back to school. So they, they do have real doctors there on hand to do these things. So this is a great opportunity for our community, for our kids, get them ready for school. And we need volunteers like you to come out and help. And they will put you in the spot that they need you. We do some military support packages, so if you have a family member that is serving in our military, um, you can see George or Dory Beamish, and they will um, get addresses for you, and they can arrange for cards and care packages to be sent um, to them from us at Fellowship so that we can show them that they are loved and that they matter um, out there serving us. 
We have new t-shirts for our new series, Fellowship Church Real. We are nothing but real right here at Fellowship Church. What you see is what you get, and we absolutely love that about that, and I love that about this church. Um, in fact, my uh, husband's cousin is visiting us from Missouri, and um, you know, we said, you know, wear what you want to church, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I wear sandals sometimes, I wear flip-flops. <laughs> so come as you are, and that's what we are, we're real here. But you can get these shirts and wear them on Sunday mornings for $5 out in our lobby. And a nice array of colors um, out there for the summer. So pick up your shirt today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm excited to have Joel singing a very special song today. When we started fellowship about 15 years ago, hard to believe, man. You've watched, I told the first crowd, you've watched me deteriorate before your very eyes. I've gotten old. I've had multiple surgeries. Are you kidding me? But anyway, but you know what's remained constant in my life? Jesus Christ. No matter what comes my way from health to whatever crisis, whatever, he is faithful. He has never left me. And I know I say it sometimes. He didn't throw me out with the trash. Boy, does that ever feel good to know you've got a God like that. And I talk plain so you can get it and understand, amen, what that means, amen, no matter what you do. Oh, we disappoint him sometimes, no doubt. But uh, he is a faithful, faithful Savior, amen. And so though we get old and hurt and decrepit or screw up sometimes, wow, is he a great God. So about 15 years ago, this song, oh, it came out. I imagine, I don't know the date on it, but it's probably about that old. 2001, well, look at that. I'm off a year, so great. So it was sung here at Fellowship Church. I don't think I've heard it since. It was a special, and the fellow that did it was a guy I'd led to the Lord many years ago. And I told Joel I was so happy that he's going to sing this song today. It's a song about heaven. I hope you just really enjoy it. Think of somebody that you know in heaven that you just love. They're just right now. They have in church with us this morning. Amen. Can you see them? I can only imagine. Would you welcome Joel and tell him you love him this morning? Come on. Amen, buddy. Come on. Oh, 
about heaven this morning huh look at that buddy awesome fantastic fantastic thank you for that come on get up on your feet we got another song amen buddy praise god you know what oh joel we just are just blessed man we're just blessed you know i'm blessed up here i've known of course jen was with us morning she's back there and the, she's somewhere Oh, yeah, that's true. She's got a youth event that she's taking all the kids this morning. She's here in the first service. And now she's doing something else with the kids. Awesome. But I just, I'm blessed to have, you know, so many that are like young'uns to me. That I've known them for years. And I've watched them grow and watched them get married and watched them raise, they're raising young'uns now. And uh, then the Lord, a couple of years ago or so, not quite, maybe, here Chris comes along. First thing I said when I met Chris, I didn't know him, never met him, but he talks country just like me. And I knew I liked him right away. But I said, son, do you play the guitar? That's the first thing I said to you, wasn't it? And he goes, well, yeah, I do. And I went, I don't believe it. Come see me in my office. And you did, didn't you? Come saw me and sat down with the guitar and I went like, Boy, I can't play the guitar. Then won't long after that, Joel comes along by himself, sitting right over there. And after church, he walks up to meet me, shook his hand. And I think I said something similar to you. I don't remember. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll do a little. A little? <laughs> Amen. But isn't that, don't you, I just love, I, mean, I love them all, but I especially love seeing young adults. And now you don't feel like it probably, you don't feel like, you feel like a middle-aged adult now. But to me, you're young adults, but that are, that are leading us in worship and leading us in praise and just being servants to us. Isn't that beautiful, amen? Can we just thank the Lord? And then my own two young'uns as well. Man. And I'm the old guy, man. Here we go. We're going to go old school on you. Are you ready? We're going to have the offering coming up. Thank you for giving. I can report to you. Summer's hard here. Okay? But I can report to you that through our giving, we ain't got way ahead, that's for sure. 
but we ain't been digging no deep hole this summer. Amen. How about that? And God's been taking care of our bills and meeting our needs. Amen. Come on. So, if you can give cheerful today, we'll receive your gift. If for some reason you don't feel appropriate or like to give with a good attitude today, we ask you to hang on to it. Amen. We love you. Period. Your giving doesn't make us love you more. We love you. But we do have needs, and this is our church. Can you say this is our church? This is. We don't get a check from the federal government. We don't want one, okay? We want to preach Jesus freely in this country. Amen? Praise God. Come on. So thank you for giving. That's coming up in a bit. Let's sing this old song. About 1870 or something, this one was written. Here you go. You ready? Come on. What a friend we have in Jesus. Come on. All our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry. We thank to God in prayer. Come on, church. church I used to do nursing home ministry when I was young on a Thursday night. And you may have heard me say this, just indulge me. But I'd go there, and I'm from the country where the men smoke cigarettes. I didn't, thank God, but anyway, that's another story. But anyway, and the women chewed snuff. Now this is in the sticks, baby. Put the lipstick on, you still see the brown here in the corner. Try to kiss that, that's rough. I'm just saying to you. No, they're back to this. Here we go. <laughs> but there was a lady when I'd go to those old nursing home ministry, and she was old. She would be right down front. Snuff running down. And she'd say, I got a request. What a friend we have in Jesus. So that's etched into my memory <laughs> right there, baby. <laughs> so anyway, for all the snuff people, here you go. Now, here we go. Let's do this last verse, amen, then we'll have our offering. Amen. Praise God. Good to see you laugh this morning. Amen. Come on, let's go. Woo. I've had a life. Amen. Come on. Are we weak and heavy laden? Covered with a load of care. Oh, precious Savior, still I refuse. Take it to the Lord in Come on! Take it 
old school stuff. Amen. Hard to beat, ain't it? Hard to beat. How many knew that old song? You, you know that old song. Isn't that a good old song? Come on. Thank you, guys, for everything you did today. Joel, great job. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for giving. And, uh, buddy, you're not going to like it. Bob Tinker, where are you? Bob, come on. You got to lead in prayer. I know. I'm tough. It'll, I won't see him for a while after this. Amen. <laughs> That's right. This guy right here has been one of my best friends for probably, man, it's almost 30 years, wouldn't you say? And uh, both he and me have been through mess, but uh, he's helped me over the years build things. He's an incredible carpenter and builder, and I just love you, buddy. I just want to let everybody know how much I love you, and you matter to me, buddy. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my friend. I appreciate you. Father in heaven, we're so grateful this morning that uh, we can sing about prayer, yes. and we know, Father, that you hear and answer our prayers yes. according to your will, and how precious that is to us, Father. Wow. Lord, we think about uh, how you've blessed us, and how you maintain and keep us and provide for us, and Lord, we just give back to you this morning a small portion of what you've given us, and Lord, that you might use it uh, in this ministry here. I just pray, especially, Father, for the downhearted this morning, that you might comfort them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, buddy boy. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'll try not to do that again for a while. I wouldn't count on it. Let's thank the Lord for everybody that served us this morning. Would you please let them know we love them, appreciate them. Amen. Here we go. Let's go to the Word this morning. Amen. Come on. Here we go. Time for some time in the Word. A little series called Real. R-E-A-L. Real. The best compliment that I ever get is somebody will say, you're real. Now, sometimes I don't know what they mean when they say that, but... But uh, that's what I want to be. That's what I'm going to be. It's just the way it is. And it sounds like it's a simple thing. It's not a simple thing. We live in a world that's plastic. And we're told to make it up, fix it up. And I'm all for that. It's fine. Look your best. That's fine. Whatever. Float your boat. But at the end of the day, 
Man, I hope that that doesn't change who you are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're a gift that you might not realize it, that God gave to the earth, man. You're awesome. And if you can find that and walk in that, that's fantastic. And the peace that comes from that and clarity when you're just you, I'm just you, I'm just me, right? That's a good thing. Doesn't mean we don't have to work on things. Some of us were raised with things that need to be changed. Uh, whether it might be some prejudices or bigoted things. and there's, I'm not saying that we don't need to change, but at the end of the day, find, can, to find out who you are, to find out that I matter, I have value, to be comfortable in your skin. Amen? Say. And at church sometimes we, I don't know, I think somewhere along the way we started dressing things up. Then we started cutting the hair just a certain way. And, you know, you looked a certain way. And somehow along with that can come a, a form of hypocrisy if you're not careful. Amen? And uh, not that that's the way it always is. It's not. Some people dress to the hilt and they're awesome. They love God fully. There's no doubt about it. But I don't know. I just want you to be you. I'm going to be me. Amen? So I'm in a series called Real. Two people in the Bible I'm studying. One in the early service, the Apostle Paul. Very religious. Very religious. Man, he was dedicated. But he was lost. And he gets saved on the road to Damascus. So God chose this religious guy, but he was lost. A lot of times people are religious and it's, 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 it's a plastic outside thing. Their heart's never really been changed. His heart was changed. Man, I'm telling you, he became real for God. Amen. And a power. And he wrote 13 books in the New Testament. It's incredible. Second guy I'm checking out is in this service, Peter. Peter was not religious. That's my opinion. Strong opinion. He was not very religious at all. And he was a fisherman. The further away you get from Jerusalem, generally speaking, the less religious you are. And that was the case in those days. I mean, if you're devout, you generally are down there in Jerusalem. If you get up there by the Sea of Galilee, you're like no-gooders. And, you know, can any good thing come out of that region? That was said of uh, Nathaniel, I believe. Amen. In the Cana area, which is the Galilee area. And they even said that about Jesus. It's not this Jesus the carpenter's son, you know, it's just a different world. And so he chose real people and he chose somebody out like Peter. So I want to look at Peter's life. We started last week and we're going to take off from there and see what we can find. Amen. Here we go, Raj. Today's message, living in reality. Are you all right so far? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say it straight up, plain Jane. Today, a lot of the church is full of bull. All right. And I don't know what planet people live on, why you can't turn on the TV and look and go, that is bull. So many people buy stuff, I'm talking about, not the Home Shopping Network, I'm talking about this religion stuff on TV. They will give, they will do, they will do, and I can see right through the joker that he's as phony as a day is long. And it's not biblical. But people hook, line, and sink or buy into it. Crazy. Okay? So this is a problem in the church. Living in reality. It's going to be a tough message. Y'all right or what? Here we go. Let's check it out. Living in reality. Now there's some interesting Peter facts. I'm still making the case that Peter was a real joker here. He's a real guy. And, and you can find him yourself. You can go to your Bible and find these things. And I found them. Here they are, some interesting Peter facts. Peter's name is mentioned more times in the gospel than any other name except for Jesus Christ. Hmm. You mean a guy that wasn't religious and had all these problems? He's mentioned only second to Jesus. Hmm. Nobody's seen speaking more than Peter. Sort of a loudmouth guy. Nobody is spoken to by the Lord as often as Peter is. There's something for being real. Jesus wants you to be real. He wanted Peter to be real. He put, put a lot of time in on Peter. Nobody confessed their loyalty to Jesus Christ more boldly and more often than Peter. And he showed it too, didn't he? In that garden, that, those, th those jokers come to arrest Jesus. Bang! Out comes that Micaiah sword and cuts Malchus' ear right off. He was in with both feet. You hear me say? He still had that little side to him, though. Well, he was real. I bet it didn't surprise any of them that were there. I bet when he pulled out that sword, all of them went, 
They saw the ear, they saw the ear flop, and I bet they looked at each other and went, it's probably Peter. That's who he was. Nobody was praised and blessed by the Lord the way Peter was. He was blessed so much that the Catholic Church made a pope out of him. Jesus didn't make a pope out of him. That was us coming along later and we people did that. You understand that? Yes or no? You didn't laugh very much, but that was funny. Here we go. But hold the phone. Hold the phone. Here we go. Hold the phone. So all these good things about Peter. But keep, I, keep, I kept finding more things. Keep looking. More stuff. No disciple is so often rebuked by the Lord as Peter was. You see what real looks like? You get praise, mm -hmm. then you get popped upside the head. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's what happened to this guy. Nobody ever denied the Lord in the gospel so forcefully and publicly as Peter did. See how real looks like? It's like a seesaw, isn't it? Did you know what that's real life? Do you know that, yes or no? Real life is we have problems. Real life is I struggle. But we don't want to say that in church. And matter of fact, we, we're taught to hide it and we're taught to cover it up because, you know, if they find out about us, you know, it's, you know, it's not going to be good. They're going to run us off or they're going to talk about us like a dog. But that's life. Peter's the only disciple in the gospel addressed by the Lord as, say it with me. So you mean the leader that he chose... He actually called him Satan. He did. You ever done anything in your life where the Lord might have looked down, down on you and said, boy, they're living, they're, they're the devil right there. You think, yes or no? Sure. Happens. And we think we're not qualified or we don't matter. Guys, if you never get to the place where you start to be comfortable in your skin and know who you are and you start to deal with some of the mess in your life, the Lord can really help change you. And he can take you places you never dreamed. Amen? And it can happen. But you don't try to, you don't get it all cleaned up first and then offer yourself. You offer him right as you are. I come just as I am, Lord. Just as I am. The Lord said harsher things to Peter than any of the other disciples. Any of them. I mean, he treated Peter rough. It's tough. So here's the deal. Let's talk about it. We're just walking. Peter was real. Not imaginary or ideal. The word real means not imaginary or ideal. To many, the Christian life has become an imaginary life. We make stuff up. I see it on TV. I hear them say things. People buy into it. Why? We like to buy into dreams. We like to dream big dreams. Okay? We like to live in a planet that's not our own sometimes. That's not real, guys. Keep looking. So Peter had ups and downs. That was his life. And God used him to be the leader. And that's called reality, guys. If you're ever going to be the, the person you need to be, you're going to have ups and downs. You just got to get to the place where you realize that. Realize, you know, God's not picking on me, okay? It's called life on planet Earth down here, okay? People mess you over. People cheat you. People lie to you. Oh, and by the way, you lie. And you mess up sometimes? Yeah, yeah, you people are online. Hello. It happens. It's called reality. That's where we live, guys. Living in reality. So we're talking about being real. So often, now here we go. So often we go from, what did we learn last week? What did we learn last week? We learned to be real. Peter said four things. Four things that in his encounter with Jesus. Four things. Very simple thoughts. I loved them. Number one, you can use my boat. He told, Jesus said, take your boat and push it out. And, and Peter agreed. He said, you can use my boat. I'll give you a chance, God. Say that with me. I'll give you a... That's it. That's where you start with the Lord right there. I mean, that's where Peter did. I, okay, you can use my boat. I'll give you a chance. Okay, that's where he started, right there. Here's a guy, he wasn't a religious guy. He's called on the Lord, and he agreed, okay, to do that much. And then, he's out there on the boat, and Jesus told him to cast his net, who had already been doing that all night, he'd already cleaned it. And he was a fisherman, and Jesus wasn't, he's a carpenter, okay. 
But what what Peter say? He said, at your word. That's the second thing about being real. Here's my life, Lord. I'll give you my life, and you can use it. I'll, you know, I don't know what maybe good is there, but you go ahead. Number two, at your word, I will. I'll do what you say, God. That was the second thing we saw in Peter. Number three, last week. Number three, so here the fish is caught. So many, they had to bring another boat to get the fish. It's incredible what happened. They fished all night and didn't do too hot. Jesus told him to do it. And you know what Peter realized? He came to realize, wow, I'm a simple man, oh Lord. He realized his own shortcomings and how great this person was that he didn't even really know that much at all. But that look at this Jesus, it's incredible. And he realized his own sinfulness. That's a big point in, in getting to the place where you're real in your life. The worst thing you can do is think you're holier than thou. You hear me? You will derail real in a heartbeat if you're full of yourself. Derail real. Real just ran off the rail. Okay? Not holier than thou. What'd he do? I caught more fish than that before. I've done this before. No. He hit the debt and said, man, am I ever a sinner next to him. Amen? The fourth thing he did is Jesus said, You've been catching fish. Follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. And you know what Peter did? He'd fished his whole life. In that culture, I mean, that's probably what his family did. And you know what he did? He laid down those nets to follow Christ. He said, I'm going to forsake all of that and I'm going to follow you. And just right, Jesus met him right where he was, right on the shore, right there at the boat, right there with the nets. He didn't change anything. He met him right there in reality. Y'all listening, have I lost you? I hope I'm not boring you to tears here. But we think we got to go over to here somehow to get it all right. And, you know, then God will accept me. No, he knows you just like you are. You can cover it all up, you think. He knows the crap, excuse me, in your life. And he loves you still. Amen? And he wants you to just hush. Give him your boat. Listen and believe his word. Realize your way ain't the right way. His way is. I'm a sinner. And number four, what you say, Lord, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to start following you with my life. And let him take you right there and see where he'll take you. Y'all listening? So that's what we learned last week. But here's what happens. So often in the Christian life, we go to that kind of thing, to being real, to, you know, just living in reality. And somehow, we think we're going to walk on water. When you come to Christ, it don't mean you still don't have a rough marriage if you've got a rough marriage. You listening or not? Well, I found Jesus. It's going to get better tonight. Probably not. Might get worse. I don't know. Things aren't just all going to get fixed when you come to the Lord. People will get sick. And they will make a conversion to Jesus and somehow think now the cancer is going to get healed. You know that, don't you? Yes or no? We come to the Lord desperate. Guys, it's not reality. Jesus came to save sinners. Jesus came to keep us from burning in hell. He didn't come to make you rich. You hear me? Yes or no? Well, I'm a Christian now. He go, everything's going to get good. And when it doesn't, Satan uses that. For us to get so discouraged. We need to be real here. Keep looking. Now I might be talking to the choir here. You might know all this. So if you do, well good. Here's a big problem though with thinking you're going to walk on water. It ain't reality. Amen say. Life, life hurts man. Life's hard sometimes. How many, let's just talk for a minute. How many of you got discouraged? No, no, it's alright. It's okay to talk to me. How many got discouraged? You're a Christian, you got discouraged in your life, and for a while you just quit. You just quit on the Lord. Can I see some hands? I just quit on the Lord. Did you know that's at least a third of the audience? And I bet you there's another third that didn't raise their hand or forgot. And the other third's probably going to quit tomorrow. <laughs> it happens. The Christian life is, my life is tough at times. Is your life? It's, it's life. That's why we have the Lord, man. Amen? Come on. 
So, the real Christian life ain't a walk on the water. Okay? That's my quote. It ain't a walk on the water. It's just not. So now let's just talk about it. With Peter, we're going to just discover some scripture. Now here's some unrealistic but popular views of the Christian life. Hang in here with me. This is what I see. This is what I see in other denominations. It's what I've learned over the years. It's what I see on TV. This is my message. Here's some unrealistic but popular views of the Christian. And I'm telling you, you can build a church if you'll do some of these things. It'll be huge. But here's some of them. Prosperity. You send your offering, God's going to give you back ten times. And lie. You know that, right? Who's getting ten times? He is or she is. Generally not you. We don't give so we can get prosperity. We give because God has given to us. And we honor Him with our giving so that others can hear about the Lord and we can have a church and we can have a ministry and we can share the gospel with people and we can have a place to come on a Sunday morning and worship with one another. That's why we give. You understand that? That's not as popular though. If I, if I got up here and told you, if you give, God is going to bless you here, 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 and you're going to get this, 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 and this, I guarantee it, we'd have more offering coming in here. But I've chosen to live a life that's real. I want a church that's real. Amen? And not full of bull. All right? That's the way it is. I'm not right on everything. I know that. But I don't buy into this. Here's another popular view. Healing. Healing. Can the Lord heal? Yes. Are all of you going to die one day? Yes. I guess that means he didn't show up on the day you died. I mean, come on. What's reality? Reality is people get sick. Reality is people get old. Isn't it amazing as people get old, almost like a graph, you can see the problems increasing. It's not rocket science here. It happens. Do I believe in healing? I believe in healing. I believe that God heals. I do that, but it's something I don't understand. I don't buy and I don't believe. You can go and take your family to Orlando or to Lakeland or somebody and wait in a long line. Somebody's going to touch you on the head and you're going to get better. I don't buy into that. To me, that's not reality, guys. Are y'all listening or not? Now, if you buy into that, you bought into it. I haven't. I don't put a whole lot of confidence in men. Anybody you worship, this is going to be crude and I'm just going to say it. Anybody you worship or you put up on a pedestal, they go to the toilet just like you do. Are you hearing me, yes or no? Let that just set into your head a little bit. I know that's hard talk. It's just that you don't hear stuff like that. It's awful. He's crude. Well, good. Call me real. Because that's what the Joe on the street will tell you. We worship Jesus Christ and nobody else. Everybody else is a man. You start to worship some guy. I think he has some power or some this. You go take your family all across the country, wait in a long line, send them all your money, sell your house. I'm going to tell you straight up, you're crazy. And generally, people out there that are lost have some common sense, and they would say the same thing. But see, we're looking for something. We're looking for a quick fix. We're looking for a walk on the water. We're looking for a way out. Here's the problem. It's not reality. Amen. Say. Name it, claim it. I speak it. There's a whole movement out there that says, I speak it. You, if you speak it enough, it'll happen. If you speak it enough, you're going to drive us crazy. It's what you're going to do. You know what? I still believe in this. I believe in doing the right thing and all that. But listen, if you want something, how about work for it? How about that? How about budget for it? How about sell those eight things you don't need like I have and could go buy whatever with it? Instead of name it, claim it with God. Gonna, come on. Get real. Sorry. Money is my friend. 
And some churches, I'm telling you what, money's more than Jesus. Talk more about money than you do Jesus. Are you kidding me? Yes or no? I love this. I was visiting a lady the other day. It was fantastic. Her daughter doesn't like me. Get in line. Because I didn't do something at a certain time. I didn't show up when they were hurting. And I understand that. I understand how that can hurt somebody. And it hurt them. I get that. But then it went on from that to say, all I ever do is talk about money. That is the biggest lie on the planet. What we do here is we do things debt free. And if we do raise money, you get to see it with your own eyes what you're buying. And I love that. I love that. But here's what I loved about it. I loved about it that that mama of that, that daughter, older mama of that daughter, whew, she let her have it with both barrels. Amen. I love that. It made me feel so good. I mean, I hope they get along and everything, but I did love that she told the truth. Guys, money's necessary for things, but it's not your friend. Jesus is a friend that sits closer than a brother. Money gets wings, the Bible says, and it'll fly away from you. How many ever lost a lot of money? Can I see your hand? You lost some money. <laughs> Woo! Money's necessary, but it's not what we do at Fellowship Church. It's not going to be the thing we talk about all the time. If you can't give cheerfully, keep it. Okay? We'll just see how we do with that. I think we're going to do fine. Here's another topic out there. Talking about walking on water theories. Destiny. You got to know your destiny. Whole message series, whole big ministries are found on destiny, church. You know, I like the Ten Commandments. You know, you want some destiny? How about do what the Lord says? Amen or oh me? You want some destiny? How about husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it? How about that, fellas? How about quit cheating? How about, isn't that a good destiny? Say that, huh? Might have a good marriage if you do that. See, I like that kind of destiny. Not the magic wand little destiny people teach. That's not real, guys. People get discouraged with this. You understand? Lost people. Jesus made a statement. If we're not careful, we'll make people twofold the child of hell. We'll come up with this stuff. And they're going to come to the conclusion that it's not true. And they're going to turn and walk away from the church totally. Y'all listening or not? I know it's a tough message. Y'all might not come back after this. I doubt it. It's the truth. I, I put my, I paint my money on the truth. Here's another one, breakthrough. You're going to get your breakthrough. If you just pray it and you give it, come on, give the money, give it, come on and pray, you'll get your breakthrough. Most breakthroughs in my life have come with, yeah, with prayer and making tough decisions and having to change my ways and having to work a little harder at it. That's how breakthroughs happen. You understand? Unless you've got a rich grandmother or somebody, and most of us don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just have to work at it. So, having said all that and really made the audience mad, let's go on. Here we go. Here we go. So here's Peter now, reality. So he's newly, newly following the Lord, newly believing in Jesus. He's on the team. He's forsaken his fishing. He's following the Lord. Not long after, straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a boat and go before him on the other side. And he sent the multitudes away. He needs a break. That's reality. Jesus needed a break. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to do what? To pray. And when the evening was come, Jesus was there alone. And the boat was now in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Don't be confused. The Sea of Galilee is like a big lake. It's six miles by 13 miles. It's the shape of a harp, like you play a harp. It's not huge. But it's in the mountains. It's in an area where storms can get very uh, tempestuous. I've been on that little lake many, many times. It's beautiful. And the boat was in the middle of this lake. 
and it was tossed with waves for the winds were contrary. You might know the story. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them. So here's the boat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hate that. How many ever got sick on a boat before? You got sick. That's horrible, ain't it? I love boating, but if you get sick, you hate it right away. So there, 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 like this. And Jesus comes to them walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were what? <laughs> we're already sick, probably. Oh my God, somebody's out there. I mean, oh my goodness, you know? This is craziness. And they were troubled saying, it's a ghost. And I can see these guys, these are regular jokers. All right? Ain't too many being too religious right there. You know what I mean? It's a ghost. <laughs> And they cried out for fear. What does that mean? Well, you fill in the blank. All right? I'm sure they said a lot of things. All right? So, in the Christian life, when we're talking about the real Christian life, guys, there are going to still be waves, contrary winds, and troubled spirits, and fear. That's the real Christian life. You're still, how many have had some of that in your life? You've had some of contrary winds, some trouble, and some fear, and... And instead of quitting, why don't you double down and start believing more in the Lord and do more right than you've ever done? How about that? Instead of running because, oh, it's not my breakthrough or what happened? Listen, this is life. Now, there are great highs in the Christian life. How many had some great highs in your life? I mean, some incredible things have happened. Miracles, crazy stuff has happened in my life. Yeah, me too. That's called reality. Listen, everything's not bad. If you live long enough, you're probably going to see some good things too. Amen? Ups and downs. That's what life is. Straightway, Jesus spoke unto them saying, be of good cheer, guys. It's not a ghost. It's me. It's me, okay? Don't be afraid. And Peter answered him. Here's Peter. Talks more than anybody. Reminds me of me. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it's you, can you see Peter? He's got issues. If it's really you and not a ghost. I bet he had that old blade out. What do you think? <laughs> then you bid me to come to you on the water. So here he is, newly a follower of Christ. If it's you, man. Bid me to come out there on that water and walk on water with you. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he what? He walked on the water. And he went to Jesus. What can we learn? But he's walking on the water. But the waves are still there. That's called real life, guys. You know the beautiful thing about the Christian life is that you can have the waves and the contrary winds and you can have the troubled spirits and even fear and the Lord can be with you and it can all be hell all around you. And you can still have a smile on your face and you can still make it. Because he's with me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Doesn't mean this stuff doesn't happen. Guys, our faith is in the Lord. Our faith is not in the circumstances or the money or the this or the that. My faith is in Him. Amen? And that there were still problems. Peter, Peter had that problem around him. When Peter saw the wind boisterous, and that's, that's reality, guys. You've got the Lord. But when everything's going on, it, it's easy to get your attention on that and to get discouraged. That's real. He was afraid. Who wouldn't be? Some of the things you're going through, you're scared. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. He was scared. He began to sink. Good chance you're going to sink some. <laughs> That's called life. God hadn't quit. He cried out, Lord, save me. Now, that's what you need to learn right there. Amen. Say Life, life is hard. Life hurts sometimes. People hurt you. It's not nice. But baby, learn those three words. Lord, save me. Amen? That's called reality. 
Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, he caught him, and this is what he said unto him. Say that last part with me. Oh, thou of little faith. Now wait a minute. He's of little faith and he's the leader. There's a lesson right there, guys. He's human. You're human. Amen? This is called being real. We want to be real in our own life to our family, but also to a lost world. Some of us are so plastic. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. People think you're a nut. It's okay to show emotion. It's okay to, you know, have some problems, okay? Say, they're never going to think they could ever come if they don't realize we're real out here. We got junk too, right? Say, I always have people talking to me about their problems. Good. Lady came to me this morning. She said, I came to you because I knew I could. I can come to you because I know you'll understand. And I'm, I'm immediately able to talk to her because I get it. Another fellow talked to me this morning over here. He's got all kinds of problems. He's had struggles in his life. But I could talk to him. He can talk to me. I said some things this morning that were personal in my life. And he said, every time you say stuff like that, it really helps me. I said, do you know how hard it is for me to spill my guts? And it makes me feel so good to know if I spill my guts, it's helping somebody. Amen? It's called being real, guys. So, he said, why did you doubt, oh little faith? Keep looking. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the boat, they came and worshipped who? Did they worship Peter? No, they worshipped Jesus. Saying of a truth, you're the who? Yes or no, who is it? Jesus, you're the Son of God. That's reality. Don't worship Peter. Living in reality. The real Christian life is a faith walk. That's what we see. It's a real life. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. He called him. He said, oh, thou of little faith, why did you doubt? The Bible is all about you and me having faith. We have a real life. I was born in Rockingham, North Carolina. I had real parents. I had a real hard situation. It was different growing up. Having parents that didn't love each other, having cheat on one another. You know, some had it harder than me. That's my life. That's my story. Jesus saved me in that little old town of Rockingham. He's been faithful to me all these years. I was married 28 years. My wife left me for somebody else. That hurt really bad. You hear me, yes or no? I loved her very much. But I still have a life. I still have to live. God blessed me. He blessed me with faith. To know that God, you love me. I matter to you. Even though I don't feel like I matter to nobody else right now, but I matter to you. That's the way I would talk to him. Amen? And just through faith, I keep looking to him. And he blesses me. Kim comes into my life. Beautiful. The nicest person on the planet. I had to go through hell to get to her. But the hell was worth paying to get to her. Because God's good. Are y'all hearing me today? This is just called real. It's life, guys. Straightway the father of the child cried out. It's all about faith. There's a guy in the scripture. His child was sick. He cried out with faith and with tears. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. That's real, guys. You believe and yet you don't at the same time sometimes. That's okay. That's called reality. Are y'all listening or not? You're not going to get condemned because you have fear. God knows you. They want one, 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 but one God, man. That's Jesus. He knows you're not. It's okay. But you still have to trust Him. But He'll take you as you are with all that faith issue you got. And He'll help you. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the Word of God. How can I have more faith? Read the Bible. Start memorizing Scripture. Get it inside of you. You're still going to have trouble. But that's going to really help you believe. The Bible says we're always confident knowing that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by what? Faith and not by what? We're confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body, and one day we will be with who? We'll be present with the Lord. Okay? And then you're just gonna you're gonna have the prosperity, you're gonna have the destiny. Alright? You're gonna have the streets of gold. Oh yeah, they're preaching right on TV. It's just the wrong time. This is a time right now that's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough times right now. You're gonna have to work hard. One day you're gonna die. 
But I'm going to tell you something right now. There is a place we're going that's exciting. It's, it's incredible. You'll never die. He's the sun all the time. Sun shines. His, his name is Jesus. Amen? Beautiful. Right now, it's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Keep your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We must believe He is. He's a reward of those who diligently seek Him. He will help you through life. Doesn't mean you're not going to have ups and downs. It's called reality. Job, the greatest man, basically, maybe who, who lived, the Bible says. Upright man. Unbelievable. He said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked I'm going to go back. And when I get old, I'm going to die, I'll be dead. That's how, basically how he taught. The Lord gives and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? You don't hear that preach much. <laughs> you know, living in reality. The real Christian life is serving God and others. Say that with me. The real Christian life is what? It's never been about me getting rich. That's not the Bible. It's never about you being your destiny. You know, Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. He was a servant. He served people. That's what we're called to do. That is the real Christian life. It might not sound fantastic, but it's a great life to serve other people. I love seeing Chris, you guys up here serving. And it must make you feel good, buddy, to see the people singing. How does it make you feel? Amazing? Is that, that's a reward of plenty, ain't it? Isn't that right? Better than any kind of money. Being up here leading y'all, serving y'all, and hearing you sing. He, he said better than any kind of money. That's what I want. Amen? Say. Good stuff. Jesus served. I'm about done. He rises from supper. He lays aside his garments. He took a towel. This is Jesus. He girded himself. After that, he pours water into a bowl. He, he starts to wash the disciples' feet. He wipes them with a towel that he had there with him. Then comes he to Simon Peter. And Peter says, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And he had dirty, nasty, stinking feet. I'm telling you. That's reality. Did you know preachers' feet probably stink? Think about that next time you worship one of them. Anyway, sorry, here we go. Well, some of them probably have their nails done, but that's another story. Excuse me. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but you will know hereafter. It's, it's real to not know a lot. Peter said unto him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, if I don't wash you, you don't have any part of me. He was, Peter was tough. Simon Peter said this, Lord, not only my feet, but I also wash my hands and my head then. That's reality, just changing on a dime sometimes, ain't it? That's fine. Jesus said, he that is washed needs not to save, to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. You're clean, but not all of you. For he knew who should betray him. You can't fool the Lord. Be real. Therefore said he, you're not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, know ye what I've done to you? He was a servant. Peter said, you'll never wash my feet. We'd all probably said that to the Lord, wouldn't we say? Sure we would have. Jesus humbled himself and he washed their feet. That's what the Christian life's about, us loving one another, serving one another. The servant's not greater than his Lord. Sometimes the life we portray as a Christian life down here that we see that's not real, it wasn't the life Jesus had. What makes us better than him? He suffered. Why aren't we going to suffer? You call me master and Lord, and you say, well, I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I've done unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant's not greater than his Lord, neither is he that sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. The Christian life, the best life, is to serve other people, not to be served. Living in reality. The real Christian life is about God's purpose and not yours or mine. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say you're John the Baptist, Elias, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said, But, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter, there he is again. He said, You're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. Did he mean he's building the rock on Peter, that Peter's the first pope? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Peter's a nut. He meant, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what the church is built on. You got that or not? I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And now Peter supposedly has keys to let everybody in and out. That's not true. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Peter was going to be a preacher of the gospel. And that's the key. People being saved is what gets people to heaven. That's the keys. You understand that? People that truly get saved down here. They're free. Amen? People that reject Christ down here, they're bound. You listening or not? This is reality. So Peter was right on, baby. He was right on. Then charged his disciples they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time, he began to show his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem. He's going to suffer many things of the elders, the chief priests, the scribes. He's going to be killed. He's going to be raised again from the dead the third day. Then Peter took him. Here's Peter again, running his mouth constantly. He began to rebuke Jesus. I guess that key thing went to his head. I don't know. He said, be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not happen to you. I've got this knife. See it? But he turned and he said unto Peter, say it with me. Get thee behind me. Only disciple he calls Satan. Of course, Judas, he said, was of Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You're an offense to me. The cross is what matters, man. So Peter was right on in his life, wasn't he? You're the son of God. You're not going to go to the cross. He was way off, wasn't he? What have I learned today? And i got to quit. That's the Christian life. You're going to be right on sometimes, and sometimes you're going to be way off. That's why you need him, and you need his word. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. That's the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts are higher than yours. That's just the way it is. I'm God, and you're not. That's reality. Jesus said to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. That's what we're supposed to do. Take up his cross and follow me. That's what I have a problem with, and I've talked way too much on this subject today, but I have a problem with some of the what I hear today that's not reality in the church because I don't see it, the taking of the cross and the denying of yourself and the serving of other people. That's what we're to be about. That's reality. Did I bore you to tears with this crazy message today? If any man will come after me, deny yourself. Why do I need to deny myself? Because I'm a moron, okay? Did you hear me? Anything that you probably ever wanted to do that's wrong, I probably wanted to do it. Let that go in your head. Why don't I do the things that are evil? Sometimes I do. And I'm horrified, okay? And I'm an idiot. You are right or not? That's called reality. Oh my gosh, Pastor Clark, he's a sinner. Yeah, I am. Huh. How do I overcome? Deny myself, Clark. Deny what the flesh says would be awesome to have. Take up your cross. I told the crowd this morning, the way I grew up, and I'm done, the way I grew up, it's a miracle that I'm not in jail for killing people. That's horrible, isn't it? That's horrible. God has showed up in my life so many times when there were things I just wanted to do that weren't right. You know? 
How many would say, I know what you're talking about, preachers? At least one will make me feel a little better. Whew, at least a third of you are horrible people. <laughs> That's the Christian life. The Christian life is I didn't do it. Amen? Did I want to? Mm-hmm. And that's when me and God had time together. And he goes, you're an idiot. You need me. You a fool. Amen? The Christian life. Take up your cross. Follow me. That's what he told Peter. And Peter became a great leader for the Lord. Amen? So you and I, we can be leaders for the Lord. But let's keep it real. Amen? I'm done. I got to quit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. Thank the Lord for his word this morning. Whoa! Crazy! I could talk all day on this subject, but you would be dead. Amen. Come on. Let's, let's stand on up. That's not a way to live. Like the preacher's a killer. No, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Amen. Let's, let's pray together. Hang in here with me. Let's, let's end respectfully. Now, reality is you want to leave immediately. Deny yourself <laughs> for a minute or two. Here we go. Father, thank you for a great day. Thank you for both messages today on Paul and on Peter. Lord, thank you, Lord, that I can get up here and talk. And Lord, you know, things I say sometimes, they don't, they don't hit the mark just right. But Lord, thank you for using me. Thank you for showing forth your grace in my life to other people. Lord, I pray for myself that you'll help me to be real. But help me, Lord, with my problems. Help me deny myself more and follow you more and follow my flesh and my passions less. I struggle, Lord. But Lord, I know I'm talking to people that when they're honest, they struggle too. So Lord, bless this word in our heart. Lord, I pray for folks today that are so religious or plastic that they don't even know who they are. They don't even know what their real feelings are. They've been glossed over. Lord, I pray that you'd help us all. Help us with this message today to really contemplate it and Spend time with you and just let's look at ourselves a little bit. Help us to be real. Help us to be the light that you have called us to be in a very dark place. But help us not to help us not to fake that light. Help us, God. Make sense of this message for us, Lord, in our hearts today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, guys. Amen. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all I need to you need to I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all well guys it's hard to close a message like this but uh, bottom line is you heard it it is what it is and I uh, hope it made sense. Tried to hang it on Peter a little bit. And I'll let you uh, be able to take it with you and figure it out. Uh, but you're not living in reality. If you think your good works or your good church attendance is going to get you to heaven. That is something in your mind that you have believed and you put it there or somebody else put it there it is not the Bible and it is not the truth the soul that sins it shall die he that has the son has life and he that has not the son of God doesn't have life that's what the Bible says 
Jesus said, you must be born again, period. There was no if, ands, or but. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. Boy, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing right there. You really need to be careful that you're in reality. All roads lead to hell except one, Jesus. Now that's tough, man. That's real, man. That's the truth. All religions other than Christ are false religions. That's what the Bible says. Period. So where are you at today? Why would you leave here today lost when you have the capability, the word's been preached, the spirit's working in your heart. Why would you leave saying, oh, I'm good. You're living in real. You're living in a false reality. You don't know what's going to happen when you leave this place. That's a dream world. You don't know when your heart will beat the last time. That's all a dream. We hope. The bottom line is, we don't know. We must make that decision to put our faith in Christ today. Today is a day of salvation. That's what the Bible says. No, I didn't make that up. That's what the Bible says. So you need to be saved today. As we close our service today, the Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. There is absolutely no other way the Bible tells us how to be saved. None. Zero. Everything else is just... A dream. So would you humble yourself today? You remember how Jesus washed the disciples' feet? He humbled himself. He didn't even need to humble himself and he did it. And you need to humble yourself. Would you humble yourself at his feet? And confess that you believe in him today. If you're ready to do that, I'd like to lead you in a prayer to do that. Only you can do that in your heart. I'm just here to help you. That's reality. I can't save you. He can. But you must be sincere. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I humble myself at your feet. You're God and I'm not. You're the only way to God the Father. You're the only way to, for me to be saved. Lord, I don't understand a lot of things. But of my own free will, I put my faith in you, Jesus. Not in me. Not in some preacher. Not in church. Not in my money. Not in my education. Not in my accomplishments. I don't put my trust in anything else. Because that's not real. I put my faith in you, Jesus. You are the real and only way to God the Father. I believe it. I confess you with my mouth. I believe in you, not just in my head, but down deep in my gut. Save me, Lord. I believe without you, I will go to hell. And that is not happening. Because I am not going there. I'm getting real with you. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, one last moment. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I said that. I meant that flat out. No doubt about it. Can I see your hand? I did that preacher. And I man, I'm glad. I did. Thank you, man. I love it when the hands are just waving at me. Amen. Come on, man. Thank you for that. Father, bless us as we go. Thank you for an incredible morning. Lord, thank you that I could preach and share. And, uh, Lord, it's, it's hard to preach on being real. So, Lord, I pray you'll help us out in the future. Help me, Lord, uh, to, to just keep working at it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, you guys. God bless you today. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here today. I'll be shorter when football season starts, okay? I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Come on. Come on. How many believe that? About three of you.